Hi everybody, we want to take a couple of minutes for those of you, whether you are an agent, a developer, a builder, investor, investor group, that has a real estate specific website where maybe your agents, your lenders have access to property data. Uh, perhaps uh, homeowners, consumers have access to property listings or to be able to be emailed based on search criteria then this is something you need to be aware of. You obviously don't want to have any hacking or any problems with your websites and your offering. So uh, this applies not only to you if you're the business owner or manager, but it's management agents, lenders, and vendors, as we put it. Uh, and again, it could be consumers, homeowners, current and past clients, subscribers for your property updates you've got to make sure that their data is safe and so is yours. This is what your website has as a major function. But something you may not be aware of, about 80 percent of data breaches these days involve password compromises. So in other words, these hackers, these criminals, cyber thieves, thugs, whatever term you want to use, some of them are getting in because they're either stealing or even figuring out passwords. They know what they're doing. So even if they get the password of one of your subscribers and get in, there's possibilities they could hack into your entire system, cause damage to your company, and possibly to your, your customers, your employees their information could even be at risk. About 80% of data breaches involve password compromises. We can't stress that enough. And then keep in mind the increase in remote working during the pandemic during 2020 has increased opportunities for breaches. Remote access is not being revoked. It's becoming the post-pandemic norm. The number of users with remote access to websites has greatly increased. So some of these hackers have moved from malware to what is now called credential stealing in order to strengthen their foothold. They look for VPN technologies and attempt to connect with employee work systems using those technologies. But besides password compromises, there's several other tactics that these hackers are using to infiltrate companies and let's run down a couple of them for you. One is a business email compromise and their techniques include email spoofing where fraudsters pose as trusted email senders asking recipients to click on links enabling them to gain access to data. Next there's domain impersonation. There's a term for it. Attackers may purchase a domain name similar in appearance to a company's or a vendor's. For example, changing a letter I to a number one could fool recipients into trusting emailers. So at the other end of things, you need to look very carefully at any link before you click on it just to make sure. Sometimes these fraudsters use name dropping. They can create an email address appearing to be a CEO's personal address or using that fraudulent website make it appear to be. They can ask an employee for instance to provide or reinforce company information. You think oh yeah your boss knows the project you're working on and there it goes. They also used unauthorized access. It's another technique that these hackers use. They gain unauthorized access to a company or a vendor email and then use the compromised legitimate mailbox to send email. The hacker gains control of the outgoing messages being sent. As we started to mention before, another of the key techniques is password guessing. Security professionals and fraudsters alike have these tools to guess passwords. Hackers know they'll even try common passwords like summer 2021 for example. Weak passwords can be susceptible to a guessing attack. Now even if you've taken these measures with your employees, those of you that have, we're a homeowner, an investor, a client can log in, 
that client may have a very simple and guessable password or they could be hacked otherwise through something totally different the hacker has their password and could use it to get through to your information password guessing also occurs after websites are hacked LinkedIn for example has been hacked and users passwords have been stolen and sold online why in many cases LinkedIn profilers reuse LinkedIn passwords on work email systems there's also ransomware it's a really bad attack where fraudsters hack into a company's network they gain full administrative control in some cases and then deploy ransomware to lock the company's systems these hackers would even demand ransom to unlock the system you've heard about this many criminals delete company backups in their initial system penetration so think about that not only could they try to hold a company for ransom you don't even know that you're getting everything back or that it's the correct information so another tactic is before they delete those backups they download them and capture the data so they'll reach out to these victims and say pay me X amount in Bitcoin or whatever to recover the system and then to pay them an additional amount not to release the data and you know that data not only could be proprietary company information and property information but it could include social security system or numbers and all kinds of addresses and confidential items so here are ways that you can combat these type of cyber risks first enable multi-factor authentica authentication as many on as many as accounts as possible harden that email spam filter create a, a strong password policy with longer passwords you know we, we know it's a pain but it helps your security it's your website it's your company on the line and train your end users and keep good backups of course but isolated from your network don't keep the backup on the same network and elevate security controls of any third parties the key is to get both employees and your end users as in customers clients and vendors to understand the significance of this especially when millions of dollars worth of transactions are on the line this is Dave Cole 